What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Lexi J Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Lexi Johnson. This is my husband and co-host, Brad Johnson. This week, we're talking about endurance, um, definitely in terms of marathon running, um, but not so much. Really, just <laughs> <laughs> just endurance in terms of goal achievement, um, really longevity in general. Um, when Brett had brought this topic up, I was like, elaborate, because my, my mind went to endurance as far as running. Um, and just, you know, that was the first thing, cardio. But you can kind of go into your explanation to endure. Yeah. So whenever we were just um, going over some different ideas for this episode, um, I thought endurance would be a good topic to discuss. And she, like she said, she was kind of like, well, explain yourself. <laughs> and, well, I, if you think about it, I mean, just the, the root of the word endurance is endure. And I think that that is a key component to, to a lot of the things that we discuss. It's it being built to endure is, uh, really the, the key to achieving anything that's, that's, that's a, a long-term goal because you can stick to something short-term and see some, see some progress. But if you truly want to see it through, you're going to have to endure uh, through some hard times. Yeah, the difference between those that achieve what they say they they want to achieve and those that don't, it's not like the goal setting itself because I talk about this all the time uh, with my ladies. Like, it's it's not uncommon. Like, every single person wants to be happy, healthy, confident, strong, successful. Like, no one in... I don't know a single person that would be like, actually, I want trash mental health. I want to feel horrible in my skin. I want to have you know, anxiety and depression, have no energy. Like no one's saying those things. No one wants to be, you know, miserable in their careers or whatever. Like the only difference it, or the difference is not, you know, setting those goals themselves because everyone wants to be successful in their health, in their personal life, whatever. It's the systems and the time in place. So if you have systems in place and you had mentioned like people seeing short-term success and they're able to sprint, but are you able to run when the finish line isn't known? Like, are you able to continue moving and continue putting those systems in place when it's no longer fun or novel anymore? When, it, when the, the newness has worn off, are you still able to execute and do those things that were once exciting because they were new and you were thinking about those shiny goals of yours, but now the goal, like the shininess has worn off. It's no longer exciting and it's just part of your day to day. Can you continue to execute? Can you endure through the, you know, the monotony? Mm -hmm. So translating this to like a, a big part of your, your work, um, like people's ability to stick to a plan their entire life. That's the, that's the biggest obstacle for everybody because I mean, that's the, the, the whole concept of yo-yoing, you know, like a yo-yo diet. Um, people just have the, a really, really hard time sticking to something forever, you know, making it a lifestyle change and not just following a fad diet and seeing some progress and then inevitably falling off a cliff again and being able to just constantly show up. Like there's very, very few people that, that I'm sure you can rattle off that, you know, that are always on point that never fall off. That they're just very dependable there. There's not many people that are, and really, you know, it's, it's because it's extremely difficult and that's, I, I've seen it with, uh, with my family members, just, you know, when we're talking nutrition um, I've, I've seen my father do it his entire life, um, since I've been alive and cognizant, <laughs> he's a perfect example of somebody who is a, is a yo-yo dieter to his core. And, you know, that's something that so many people suffer from. They, they don't have the endurance. They'll, they'll make a change for a very short period of time and then they fall off again. I also think in addition to the endurance, they have people would be better off putting blinders on because when that shininess of your own, like your own race wears off, you can look over and people are trying new things and they're excited about it. 
and that seems extra shiny and new and exciting. And because you remember that honeymoon phase from your initial journey, you're like, oh, well, maybe that'll like, maybe that'll re-spark some stuff. And then they hop over and it's basically you're taking more steps back and you're starting earlier. If you put your blinders on and you just understand that you are running your race, that what someone else is doing does not uh, does not affect you whatsoever. It doesn't hinder you. It doesn't, you know, help move you forward. It is truly a you versus you race. And if you can manage to keep your eyes on what you're doing and focus on the task at hand, I think that we'd be a lot more successful. But you're constantly looking over and seeing that your neighbor's grass looks greener. But their grass looks greener because they're consistently watering it. And yours would be the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do you think that is that we do that? I mean, I think it's the same reason that like when I'm stuck in a task at my desk that I open up Instagram. That I just want an escape. That I think that you want like some alleviation from that discomfort. And it's easier to, to say that somebody has it easier than you do to give yourself that validation that it's okay to, to not do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And if you're seeing someone else succeed, you think, well, I mean, it has to, like, if they're seeing success, it has to be because it's easy, not because they're working extra hard. Right. Because if they're working extra hard and they're seeing success, then it, like, it highlights a deficit between you and I, between right. our work, like our work output, which is uncomfortable. Yeah, and that sucks. No one wants to admit that. But if they're like, well, they're seeing success because their plan is easier, because, you know, they have a hack, because they got a skinny wrap or a skinny tea or they took a shot that zapped their appetite, then that must be the answer. That must be, you know, the route I should go because look at their six like their very fast success and that's just not the case like that's one of the biggest things that people try to find that people try to find really in everything is the hack and they instead of doing what they know would actually work you know having the endurance and doing what they know what works trying to sidestep that and find this little shortcut and find that little hack that that little that one little thing that nobody's found quite yet but you know you're gonna you're gonna find it <laughs> i'm gonna find this loose thread that i that that uh, is inevitably going to lead me down this path of perfection where i don't have to do near as much as everybody else but i'm gonna get that result and un unfortunately just doesn't exist and it's human nature to want things to be easier but in all reality, if you want, if you want to achieve the most desirable things that this world has to offer, then it's always going to be down this path of discomfort, this path of, of difficulty, this, this path of, of trials and tribulations. And that's where endurance comes into play because it's not always, well, it rarely is it fun. Yeah, if you want the path of least resistance and if you want it to be constantly fun and enjoyable and novel and exciting, then you have to reevaluate and lessen your outcome expectations. Otherwise, why would you be entitled to to reap the rewards of the hard workers, of mm -hmm. the, the gritty, of the ones that are willing to endure over long periods of time of putting in that work consistently? Like, why why do we feel entitled to those those results when you're not putting in equal effort, when you're not putting in, you know, consistent effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that, I mean, that mindset is a matter of entitlement, I believe. I think that you think for whatever reason that you're owed those results from doing partial the work that, that's owed. Mm -hmm. What was it that we had the podcast on quite some time ago and I asked what the opposite of something was? And somebody ended up responding to you and saying that the opposite of it was entitlement. It was Blair McLeod that, that answered it. Shout out Blair. Um, gratitude. gratitude. The, the opposite yeah. of gratitude is entitlement. Yeah. And I think that's very true. That, that was very introspective uh, for her to think of that. So I was, I was certainly blanking on it, but I think that's, that's a great, a great point that she made. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And sidebar. Blair is an excellent example of someone that endures. She is an excellent example of someone that has her eyes on her own race and she understands the work. Like her and I had a conversation recently just about once you detach like 
a specific deadline or something, then you understand that it's like it's just part of the process. Like it is progress through process and that is as simple as that. Like you we, you know, speaking generally, we spend so much time and energy and brain power trying to hack our way into, you know, the secret code that if we just put, you know, a fraction of that energy and time and effort into just doing the damn shit that you know you should be doing, Mm -hmm. you would be so much further along. Think about all the times that you've deliberated over exercising, how all the time that you have complained about being unhappy in your skin, all the time that you have, you know, stressed and avoided situations just because you weren't confident in your skin, the amount of time that you have deliberated over doing the thing that you know exactly what you need to be doing, Mm -hmm. you could be so much further. Yeah. But we just like... We spiral and spiral into nothing. Into yeah. like it's kind of like that paralysis where you're just you're frozen. Yeah, I said something a second ago that I don't know. I I, I almost hesitate to to phrase it this way because I, because I said that it's almost never fun, you know, to like choose the hard path. But in another sense, the result is fun because you get to you get a rewarding result and if you didn't choose that harder path your end result is going to be disappointing anyway so i guess it's nice in the moment where you don't have to do something hard but your end result is going to be well there's there's no reward and you're not going to see any progress of any sort whatever it is you're pursuing if it's if it's you know your fitness if it's your nutrition if it's a financial goal whatever it is if you don't make that hard decision, which by hard decision, I mean the decision that's going to benefit you in the long run, the decision that isn't always easy to make, like don't grab the cookie (laughs) instead of grabbing the cookie, walk away from it and make a better decision on something you can have. That'll actually put, you know, put you in a position, um, towards achieving your goal. Don't go and buy that shiny thing just because you want it really bad right now. Whenever you know that you have the savings goal, that you've got and you're only X dollars away from, you know, meeting that savings goal. Apply it to anything. I think talking about endurance in terms of finances would be a good thing and it applies to everyone um, that we could touch on. Just like you can speak much, much better in terms of finances. But if you have a savings goal or if you have a goal to, you know, buy a rental property or buy a property of your own, um, set up a retirement account, set up a retirement account, whatever it is, you have to have the foresight to know what's down the road and stop being so distracted by that shiny object Mm -hmm. that's in your face. Yeah. Yeah. The compound effect is one of the most powerful things that we have the opportunity to take advantage of early in life. And, the, the whole finance thing, I'm not going to pretend like I'm the finance guru, but I have, I, I've taken it upon myself to, to, to learn things, read things, apply things. And I feel like I've done a fairly good job of that, um, early in life. But the point to be made here is essentially that these short term decisions, these, these in the moment decisions that you can make to set yourself up for success in the future, it applies to finances. It's a very, it's a very good parallel to finances in general, because if you're, if you put away a hundred dollars today, instead of buying that new pair of shoes, that hundred dollars today is going to be worth exponentially more 20 years from now. And while you're not going to, that, that the same doesn't necessarily apply to losing weight, where if you don't eat that cookie, that, that hundred calories that you didn't need of that cookie is an, is an exponential component where you lost 20,000 pounds over the next 20 years. <laughs> but you get where I'm going with that. You, 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 it's a compound effect with, uh, with the money aspect and making these sound financial decisions now will benefit you exponentially in the long run. And most people don't have the the foresight to to make those decisions now. Most people don't have the foresight to to see, okay, well, this is good for me in the long run because they focus on what they want right here, right now, because it's very satisfying right here, right now. But even one day later or three days later, you're going to look back and say, 
man, you know, it's not as exciting now. And now I'm not in near of, as good of a position as I could have been. Yeah. Had I not made that decision. And sometimes that, that's something that I struggle with as well. Like I'm not immune to this whatsoever. And I think that it's important to remember that there's not a single human on earth that is disciplined 24 hours a day. No. But you don't have to be. You need to be able to flex that discipline in those those moments, in the decision points. You have to be able to choose what you want most and evaluate what you want most over what you want in that moment. And it comes down to that simple, very, that very simple question. Is this what I want right now? Or is this what I want, you know, in the long run? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's a very simple conversation, really. It, 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 there's so many parallels to what we talk about all the time with, it's not, it's not, it's not difficult. Like it, well, it, that's not a great word. It's not complex. It's not this wildly complex formula. It's really simple. It's just, it's hard to make these decisions because we're humans. Simple, it, not easy. Yeah. That's a very concise way of saying it, an eloquent way of saying it. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're humans and we're, we're very prone to making or letting emotions t- take, you know, take a hold of the wheel and it makes life a lot harder, um, because we are that way, but flexing that diligence muscle and training yourself to understand that what I decide right now will benefit me 10 X later by making the, the right decision that's that's where you really start to see gains and being able to do that time after time after time instead of taking one step forward two steps back constantly that's what most people do throughout their entire life one step forward two steps back one step forward two steps back you never gain any ground at all you're just in this yo-yo effect yeah i think that um just in terms of endurance like finances and you know health in general can be paralleled but also like endurance in relationships and just we we draw a lot of parallels to relationships and health and talking about how it's kind of you have to feed that relationship you have to continue maintaining over time and having the the endurance especially in 2023 like in the very very modern world where you have access and temptation on like you see every happy couple on Instagram and TikTok that is maybe fabricated. Like you see these highlight reels and then you're like, well, I mean, my husband and I don't like circle in a um, sunflower field that then maybe, (laughs) maybe we're not soulmates. Maybe we don't have the best relationship. Like we don't have the most aesthetic Instagram pictures. We, you know, all of, all of the things that we are just inundated with all the time and it plays that comparison game, but it comes back to like water your own grass. The grass is greener because it's wa- being watered, it's being nurtured, mm-hmm. and also the grass may be fake. So, <laughs> right. beware of turf. Yeah, social media has just made things so difficult to just stay in your lane, keep your head down, and just keep going. Are you wearing my socks? I definitely am. I yeah, just I, noticed. I told that. you. I told you we were. I was low on socks. I had to bum a pair. They're a little tight. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> I just noticed that. Um, They're like borderline little. F- okay, they fit a little bit better. I need some low rising socks for those shoes. Um, you got me totally derailed here. Sorry, social media. Well, you were wearing my socks. I was derailed. <laughs> I was like, those look so super familiar. Anyway, you yeah. had said social media. But yeah, it's it's really hard to keep your head down and just focus on what your goals are and like what you need to do, like the, the very tactical things that you need to do to achieve your goals whenever like you're constantly looking over the fence at the next guy and saying, OK, well, what does he have and where is he at and what's he got? And that's. There's a difference between being able to like. Look at somebody and think good for him you know i i'm gonna aspire to to have something that they have and then there's the alternative is being able to look at somebody and say i should be in that position why am i not in that position and what have i missed or you know why 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 them and not me exactly and you start 
basically it's making these excuses for why they had it easier it circles back to what you were talking about earlier than, than what, you know, easier than what you, um, easier than the path that you've gone down this comparison game that we can play super easily. It can become a, a real, uh, a real time waster and you stop focusing on just what you can actually do to further, to further yourself. And I also want to note that when you're looking at someone and you're like, well, they have it easier because X, Y, and Z, they very well could, you know, they actually, you could have a harder circumstance. You could be a single mom that has to work extra, like, you know, extra shifts. You could have had an injury that set you back. You could have had X, Y, and Z, but at the end of the day, like you don't get an asterisk. Like if it's, did you accomplish what you set out to accomplish or not? And then when you do accomplish that thing and you had that setback and that adversity, that is that is a tool in your tool belt. And that's something that you can hang your hat on. And that's something that is incredibly empowering because there are other people that are in similar, you know, adversarial positions and they're feeling empowered by looking at you that overcame. It doesn't do anyone any good just to be a victim and just to you know, constantly list the reasons that you didn't overcome and the reasons that you didn't succeed. Like that tune gets really freaking old. Right. And you get to stay a victim. And it only victim. sounds good to you. Right. And you get to stay a victim if you continue to be a victim. I mean, if, if you continue to just stay in the exact same position you're at and, and preach about how hard you've got it, then you get to stay there too. So hope you like it. Well, I mean, like it sucks. Yeah. It sucks if, if you're in a bad spot. I'm not going to argue that. But there's nothing that can be done about that bad spot unless you do something right. about it. Yeah. There, and un unfortunately, no one's coming to save you. Exactly. Unfortunately, nobody's going to come and just save you and pull you out of that unfortunate situation. No matter how unfortunate it is, like life's not fair. And, and you know, that's just the way it is. Um, it's the hard, but true part of life. And that's oftentimes what people get stuck in. They're like, well, this isn't fair. Well, you're right. It's not. And that sucks. You know, and I hate that for you, but nobody's going to be able to save you from it. Only you are. And you have to make that decision to get yourself out of the situation that you're in. Um, it's hard to talk about that type of stuff because truthfully, I've had a pretty good setup. Like I came from a, a very solid family. Um, I had, I didn't have like a separated home. I, I had a very like basic traditional upbringing and I was very blessed in that way. So that's a hard topic for me to, to discuss, but it doesn't change the reality because I don't want anyone to ever look at me and be like, well, you don't understand because you didn't go through what I went through and they'd be right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue that. Um, but facts are facts. Doesn't change the truth that you have to get your, everybody, no matter where you come from, no matter what situation you're in right now, no matter, no matter what situation you were in, no matter what situation you're going to be in, every single person on this planet has had things to overcome. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how silver spooned your life was or was not. Everybody has the opportunity to make something of themselves. Everybody has the opportunity to take a hold of the wheel for themselves and head down the, the path that they want to go down. Um, that's, that's my little Ted talk on that because it is, I get a little impostery whenever we start talking about things like that, because I do know that it's, it's something that somebody could easily call me out on. Yeah, I get that for sure. But I think that one, like it's a really evolved thing for you to identify that like, Hey, I have had an awesome life. I've been very blessed, but also like you said, it's, it's just, it's a matter of truth. Like and the, on the same token, the I could easily take the back seat and try to take the easy road and not make something of myself and, and do things for myself that nobody ever would have dreamt that I would actually try to do which is kind of the path I'm trying to go down. I could, I could do that pretty easily and just coast hit cruise control and not try and live like a, a halfway decent life. But that's not what I'm trying to do. I mean, everybody always has like this coast mode that they can hit and 
now your baseline coast mode, that's going to be different for everybody. Somebody, you know, some trust fund kid out in Silicon Valley, maybe in a situation where he literally would never have to work a day in his life, he or she, and that there's everything's relative, you know, and then you can have somebody in, in the Midwest that grew up on a farm and could easily coast doing absolutely nothing spectacular for the rest of his life, just doing what was really, you know, halfway needed just to, to really exist. But taking what you've been given, if you've been given anything at all and define the expectations and making a name for yourself. I think that's extremely admirable. I think so too. I think just to circle back to, you know, the topic of endurance and kind of wrap it up, it's just, are you willing to do the boring things long enough to, to see the fruits of your labor? Or are you going to continue hopping to the next thing and thinking that you have a, that there's a hack out there that someone knows a secret that you don't know? Um, and it's just a matter of, continuing on keeping going when you can't see the end of the road when you don't have the light at the end of the tunnel when nobody's watching and clapping for you every day like you still have to show up it is your responsibility your success and your outcomes if you want to take credit for your success you have to take credit for the systems in place like I am I'm fully aware and ready, prepared to take responsibility if I fall flat on my face. Right. Because I'm also excited to be able to take some responsibility if I am a huge success. And I think that that's, that's a bet I'm willing to take on myself. And I, I think that you guys, yeah. I hope that you guys will be as well. It's a very good point. Yeah, everybody's willing and eager to, to jump at the opportunity to, to take credit for, for their successes but nobody wants to take credit for their shortcomings. Nobody wants to take credit for the situation they're in if it was their fault. Nobody wants to take credit for the the victim situation that they're in, the, the victimhood that they claim so hard and and admit that really that a lot of this was, was because of the decisions that you've made that led you to that point. Um, so you, whatever you want to be able to grab onto so hard to be able to say, you know, I succeeded, I did this thing. Also be willing to accept that you have to, you have to take ownership of your failures or in your shortcomings as well. And it's a really freeing thing. Like if you say I'm responsible for the position I'm in and I'm super unhappy about the position I'm in, if you're a part of the problem, you can absolutely be part of the solution and you can dig yourself out and then you are the victor. And that's, very exciting and should be really rewarding it also should empower you to you know get in the driver's seat you don't life doesn't have to be an uber you don't have to be in the back seat so nice thanks that was, that was a good one um yeah i mean I and and i don't want to i also i always like mentioning this i don't want to ever come across as um acting like i'm i'm perfect Oh, we're no. perfect. For sure, no. um, I mean, I have to call myself out on my own bullshit all the time. I mean, again, we're all humans. And while we hold ourselves to a much higher standard than the average person does, um, both in the, the health and wellness world uh, and professionally, uh, we, we hold ourselves to a very high standard. Um, we're, we're certainly not, uh, not subject to, to having our own faults and, and, Need, ha, needing to have moments where we call ourselves out on our own bullshit. Oh, yeah. I am just recently coming out of a funk, working to defunk myself. So, yeah. Defunk it ha- mode. It happens to the best of us, but we persist on and, you know, keep water in my own grasp because that's all I can do. The ability to, to, to calibrate along the way. That's part of the endurance process mm-hmm. because it is going to, there are going to be a lot of times, a lot of times where I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> I mean, I'm only 28. Um, but I, I've, I've learned pretty quickly that life's just hard. I mean, it's, there's, it's not all just sunshine and rainbows. Um, e- even whenever you set, set yourself up for success, um, whenever you go down this path of trying to find personal excellence and everything, you know, trying to be the best that you can possibly be, um, it's, it, it, it throws a lot of obstacles at you. Absolutely. 
All right, guys, I think that's all we've got for you this week. But in the meantime, if you have any topics or questions you want us to touch on, uh, we've been getting a few of those and we really like to hear your feedback. So at the end of the day, we just we want to be able, be able to provide value for you and, you know, bring a good product that you guys enjoy listening to. So if there's anything that you want us to touch on, go ahead and uh, shoot us an email at pod at LexiJWellness.com. Until then, we'll see you next week.